This podcast is part of the National Archives Voices of the Armistice campaign, commemorating 90 years since the end of the First World War. Hear more voices at nationalarchives.gov.uk forward slash armistice. Part one of four. My name is William Spencer. I'm the Principal Military Specialist at the National Archives at Kew. Rail 253-516. stroke Great Western Railway Audit Office, Paddington Station. A collection of letters from members of the staff who served in the Audit Office sent back to that office after they had joined the Army during the First World War. It is an unusual collection for such a discreet amount of material relating to a very small office to survive here at the National Archives. August 1915. The first issue of the newsletter has been favourably received. Thanks are due to those who kindly lent the letters and photographs. In the August issue, we have several very interesting letters. We are able to report that A.E. Rippington is now getting about with the aid of crutches. We wish him a speedy and full recovery from his wounds. Harold Watts of the Drake Battalion, Naval Volunteers, writing from Gallipoli Peninsula, gives some idea of the strenuous time he is undergoing there. It is gratifying to hear that parcels of cigarettes, tobacco and other delicacies are being forwarded from the office to our colleagues away on active service. Those desirous of cheering up our comrades can be put in touch with those forwarding parcels. Dear Ernie, thanks very much for your letter and kind wishes. The winds are getting on all right. They have discovered a living in all. It is jolly hard not to be able to sit up, but I suppose a month will soon slip by. My people came to see me yesterday and the day before. You ought to see my face. They cannot shave me because I have scraps of shell sticking in, and as I had not had a shave for about a week before I was wounded, I look a pretty picture. Well, old chap, I am glad I am wounded to get out of that hell, and if you ever meet a chap that says he wants to go back, call him a liar. If you could manage to come down at any time, I should be delighted. Well, I must close now, and expect you'll have quite enough trouble to read what I have written already. Hoping to be with you soon, your old pal, Rip. Dear Arthur, I expect you are all wondering why I have not written, but it is an awful effort to get all correspondence off and be on active service at the same time. I can't say that I'm enjoying myself out here. It's awfully hot, and we're eaten up by millions of flies. Life in the trenches is not a picnic either. We have about four or five days out of them, and eight or nine in them. When we're out supposed to be resting, we have to go on working parties, digging, etc. Then wherever we are, we're always under shell fire so it's not much rest after all. The last shell we had in camp, there was four killed and 17 wounded. We have been under fire for three months now, and we should like a rest as the strain is tremendous on one's nerves. I don't think the troops in France get it quite as bad. Then again, the only comforts we have are sent from home, as the country here is quite barren, and we cannot buy anything in shops. I'd give a quid for a pint of beer down the club. Our food consists of half a loaf of bread per day, bacon and tea for breakfast. Bully beef and biscuits for dinner, and jam for tea and cheese. Lime juice is served out about four times per week, that is a drop is put into a dix of water and a cup full served out per man, and rum is served out twice a week, sometimes, that's about four tablespoons each. We live in a trench, and it's a mercy it don't rain otherwise we'd be washed away. The fighting just lately has been terrible. Our shell's not the enemy always, and the sight in the trenches that we take is awful. We wear our respirators because of the awful smell of the dead. I'll never get the sight out of my eyes, and it will be an everlasting nightmare. If I am spared to come home, I'll be able to tell you all about it, but I cannot possibly write as words fail me. I can't describe things. T. Harold Watts This podcast is a recording of extracts taken from records at the National Archives and is a copyright of the Crown. <laughs>